am Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is revolutionizing the sound of gospel music. His passion lies in creating powerful, effective Christian lifestyle music that crosses genres and seeps to the heart of people. He's here today to talk about his new singles entitled The Name and Walk on Water. I want you to help me welcome singer, songwriter, producer, Molly Music to the show. How are you doing, Molly, and welcome to the show. Yes, I'm doing good. It's good to be here. Good. Thank you so much. Now, Molly, I got to ask you, because many people ask me this question where does the name molly music come from well um I'm, my name is quentin jamal pollard and in the south they, uh, everybody calls you by your middle name so jamal was always what was said and jamal turned into Maul, Maul turned into molly <laughs> and molly turned into molly music <laughs> <laughs> is it because of your love for music that's how molly music got attached to it <laughs> yeah it's just music is on weapon of choice, so it just kind of worked out that way. Okay. Now, I noticed when I talked to you, you have like a little accent. Where does your Where does your accent come from? I have no idea. Like, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> so I do not know. No, I, and no one else in my family speaks like I do, and I don't hear myself speak. I don't really speak. But everybody's like, are you from West Indies? I'm like, no, I'm from West Georgia. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. you do sound like you have an accent. I would have thought you were from the West Indies as well. So that's why I was asking you that question. Now, you and Kirk Franklin really ripped it at the celebration of gospel last month. Yeah. One of my favorite jams, of course. Give me that. I wanted to know, how did yeah. you and Kirk Franklin make that connection to work together? Well, first of all, the celebration of gospel was so much fun. Um, but that's kind of how it all started. Um, Holly Carter, who is my uh, manager, uh, for Releve, she has a conference that she does every year called the Merge Conference in Los Angeles and sometimes in Brunswick and other places. It's a beautiful conference. It's, um, it consists of the merging of um, spiritual and like gospel and like mainstream acts and mainstream people and things. So when those uh, happen, this she has a showcase of the year. The year before last, I did the showcase, and Kurt Franklin was like, who is this guy? And the crowd was like, that's Molly music, that's Molly music. And he's like, I'm Chris Franklin, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> so we had a conversation like the next day, and he was kind of like, man, I need you on my album. And we just kind of broke bread, and he just really, really poured into me. Um, and I was waiting for the song, waiting for the song, and I think I got it like the day before we recorded it. All those words. Really? Flew into Dallas, and we recorded it, and it was amazing. It was a smash from the first time that we sung it. Um, and uh, from then, we've just been able to really go. So he's not just said or looked at as being a great person. He is truly a pioneer, a mogul, and an icon in our industry. And I'm just so glad that he was able to see what he saw and that he cultivates it and has cultivated it the way that he has. Because you have such a unique vocal ability. Your sound is so different. It's so unique. And I think that's what separates you right now from even the other artists that are out there and just even how you put your words together mm -hmm. in your flow. What is the inspiration mm -hmm. behind your vocal ability? Uh, I have no idea, like, directly. Um, but I do know that it consists of, it consists of, like, uh, just freedom, creativity, and just a flow. So um, I, I don't know if there's anybody that I hear in my head that I, you know, look to sound like I, I imitate, but I just know what comes out, comes out, and it's consistent. So growing up, who were some of your musical influences growing up? Oh, man. Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, Michael Jackson, <laughs> a whole lot of Prince, uh, and then kind of moving into the latter half with Bilal, D'Angelo, and soul moguls like that, James Brown. I don't know, all these guys kind of have the same thing that I aim for, and especially one of my greatest inspirations is Bob Marley, which probably is a big reason why I may speak the way I do. <laughs> okay, well, that might yeah. be behind it. Okay, so that's where that kind of comes from. And Molly, you're doing something real different. You just dropped two awesome singles right now that we are just jamming on the yeah. air. You have a song, Walk on Water, and also The Name. Tell me the inspiration behind the song, The Name. Well, the name is a very, very powerful song. I love it. It's one of the least elaborate songs um, on the album, but the generations before us understood it, but it's just me introducing the power of the name of Jesus to our generation because even though we're talking about victory and we're talking about holy and we're talking about God, I don't know if we're, anybody on our level has 
you know, reintroduced the name or the power of the name of Jesus to us again. So I just kind of took the liberty by writing the name, by sharing my personal testimony in a language that we we speak, you know what I'm saying, so we can be able to continue to keep, you know, power and faith in the name of Jesus. And so tell us a little bit about the song Walk on Water. Oh, Walk on Water is just the epitome of everything that has been happening. And even this whole life, as far as following him and being this artist, as far as my music and all that goes, it's just like walking on water. It's, it's unreal. It's impossible. Everything about it seems improbable, but it works out every time. You know, Molly, it's funny. I had two separate people on two separate occasions both ask me, have you ever talked to Molly Music's parents? <laughs> and I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Everyone has told me your parents are absolutely great. They brag so much on your parents. Can you tell me a little bit about your parents and what makes them so special that people <laughs> love your parents? Well, no one ever believes that my mom is my mom whenever we travel together. Um, because I guess how she looks. That's all I saw, so I don't know how I was supposed to look, and that's mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But mom and dad and my whole family is very instrumental in, you know, everything that goes on. Um, they're my covering. They're, they've been my protection so far. You know, they scout. They, they pray. They discern. And, uh, and they're really fun people. So when we go, um, a lot of the people and the promoters really speak to them first. So I'm always coming second after they've already developed a relationship with my mom or my dad. And uh, so they, when they see this family affair and, you know, they look back on everybody's always really moved by it. And I think it's a blessing as well and something I don't take for granted. And that's good because it's not like your mom or your dad is like a mominger or a dadinger. People really genuinely uh-huh. love your family. And my next question, uh-huh. you have a song called The Job Experience. That song yes. is is deep. Now, was that a true story? What was the inspiration behind that story? Well, uh, no, uh, Job experience. I'm pretty sure that story is a real story for somebody. I'm not one that I personally um, have encountered or experienced, but I just I read went back and read the story of Job for myself, <clears throat> and uh, and I said I say that my concert sometimes. But one of the things that really plagued or hurt us as um, church babies, kids in church, people who grew up in church, we think we know the stories, but don't know, we never read them for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So like Pastor might have preached it and kind of gave you revelation on it, so you think that you read the story, but you don't even know where it is in the Bible. Looking for the story of David and Psalms and stuff. <laughs> but like, when I read and read the story of Job myself, before I read it personally, I always thought and envisioned him to be this beast, like this guy who his leg was you know what I'm saying, drying up. He had all these different diseases. Everybody died, and no matter what, he was like, yeah, will I trust? Only because that's the sermons that were taught in what I was on a Sunday, you know, vacation Bible school. But when I read it, I was like, whoa, 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 that's not really what happened. And I feel that since that's how it happened in the Bible, that's how it should be shared with us in real life. Not even be made a model that causes us to feel less when we doubt or when we fear or when we even have regrets. So, I told the story like it was in the scripture, but I just modernized it, and um, and God moved on it, mm-hmm. and that's just kind of what it was. So it's pretty much it's, it's called the Job experience because it's the experience of the story of Job retold. So mm-hmm. I just gave like an amplified Bible version. <laughs> and you did, and it's very powerful. Even the video is very. I was like, did he know anybody that went through this, or was this something personal? So I had to ask that question. Oh no. And one of my last questions is, you worship the Lord in, in such a pure place, especially it's really beautiful uh-huh. to see a man worship God in such a pure place. Can you kind of tell us briefly mm-hmm. about your relationship with the Lord Jesus, and how did you come to know him? Well, I, I'm i grateful for him, um, and I'm grateful for our relationship, only because of how free it is and how untainted it is, mm-hmm. and the freedom and the liberty that he's given me, and that, like, I mean, he everything from makes me laugh to makes me cry, you know what I mean? To makes me sad, uh, to makes me happy. He restores me. Like, he is really like a lover to me. So it's very easy to write songs with and about him. Um, and so when it comes, when I, whenever we're singing, whenever we're, you know, with people and things like that, whenever I come to a concert, I'm not doing nothing but singing about and loving on a God that I spend every day with, you know? And on top of it, I'm not obsessed with the image or the portrayal of a deeper relationship. I just rock with what we have, and it always seems to just bless people. So it's definitely real, and it's so much fun. I'm honored, and I enjoy loving him. 
And you can see that. And you can really see that in your performance. And even when people see you in concert, that's the one thing they say. They're like, oh, my God, he's amazing. But I think it's your your love for the Lord and your relationship with him that comes through in your performances. Yeah. How can people get your singles? Where can they go? Can they go to iTunes, Reverb Nation, Amazon? Where can they download your singles? Yeah, yeah the name and work on one are unavailable on iTunes or Amazon or anything like that yet. But we just really want people to be able to request them at the radio stations, and um, because that's that's where we're releasing them to right now. At this point, we get everything together with the release first before we start to rock the single. So they're not available yet. Okay, but they are available if you request them at your radio station. Okay, and now can people follow you on Facebook or Twitter? And if so, what's your name? Is it Molly Music on Twitter and Facebook? Absolutely, on Twitter, just at Molly Music, and on Facebook, search Molly Music. Okay, now when can we expect the entire project to drop to be in store so people can purchase it? Purchase it. I I can't say guaranteed. Um, just a little insight. Like we're, I was so ready to get it to everybody. And I, while I was on the Mystic tour, I was like, "Yo, the album's coming out top of the year. I'm just going to top of the year. I'm just going to top of the year." Uh, then we started getting messages from Australia, Nigeria, Africa. Um, Mexico and these places that are just like, hey, we love Molly music too, and we can't get our hands on the music. So there are people in different countries who don't even have the second coming mm. who enjoy the ministry just as much. So that's why we recognize that our territory had expanded and we needed to be able to be good stewards over all of it, not a portion of it, just because I'm from here. You know what I mean? Right. So a lot of the hold that is being able to make that transition into an international uh, artist our international ministry uh, while still catering to the very, very blessed and extremely fortunate United States. (laughs) (laughs) What a way to put it. (laughs) Got away with the words, I must say. (laughs) Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And I know God is going to continue to bless you because your heart is so pure and you love him. And we definitely wish you all the best. And we look forward to having you coming back on the show. Thank you so much. I'm honored. You are so welcome and have a blessed day. You too.